What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So over the last couple of days, a bunch of information has been leaking out from NVIDIA after a serious cyber attack. And part of that leak appears to reference a next generation switch system, which includes some pretty serious features, as well as even the chip that it could be using. We'll go over all that here today. Also, we are gonna be talking about the Valve Steam Deck because unfortunately, it appears to be having its own issues around stick drift. And we're also gonna be talking about a surprising feature that was just kind of dropped on Nintendo Switch Online. Guys, if you enjoyed these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below and ring that notification bell so you can keep up to date with all the uploads here on the channel. And we're gonna start today with Xbox Game Pass for the month of March, as it looks like several titles will be heading into the service. We can see this card posted up over on news.xbox.com starting uh, with games that are available right now. Far Changing Tides, that's cloud console and PC. That was actually a day one release into Game Pass. And then we have Microsoft Flight Simulator, that just being for the cloud. Moving up to March 3rd, we have Lightning Returns, Final Fantasy 13, that's console and PC. Moving to March 10th, we have Kentucky Route Zero, that's cloud console and PC. We have Lawn Mowing Simulator, that's Xbox One specifically. And then we have Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, that's cloud console and PC. That is actually a really good entry for the service we had talked previously, that there was some disappointment from Square around sales for this game. At least they're gonna be pulling in a check from Game Pass. That was something I had kind of speculated on that would of course help to make up maybe the difference in the cost of development here, but certainly worth checking out if you have not. Like I said, it's going to cloud console and PC. So plenty of ways to play it there. And then uh, following up on March 10th, we have Young Souls. That's cloud console and PC. I also want to point out some of the games that will be leaving March 15th. That includes Nier Automata, Fogs, Torchlight 3 and then The Surge 2, but a pretty good way to start off March for Xbox Game Pass. Definitely check out Marvel, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, a great experience. And if it's going into Game Pass, you can just download it and try it out. Also, we did have a ranking of the best video game characters of all time from the Guinness Book of World Records. This was just done uh, with a poll. I think it was like 13,000 or so people voted. And some of the results are a little surprising, not Number one though, we can see the list here. I'm just gonna show you the top 10 with Mario coming in at number one, which I mean, yeah, if you show a picture of Mario to anyone, they're gonna be able to name him right there. Link, that was number two. Master Chief at three, Solid Snake at four. I am curious if people would actually be able to name Solid Snake, like overall, I, I know most of us would be able to, but like, if you just like walk down the street, show somebody a picture of Snake, would they be able to name it as Solid Snake? Uh, but then Cloud Strife, Pac-Man, who I think is more recognizable than Master Chief, Solid Snake, or Cloud Strife to just the mainstream audience. Lara Croft, Gordon Freeman, Kratos, and then Sonic. Once again though, I think Sonic is like top three, just looking at these top 10 here. And that even goes a bit further, just looking at number 12, for example, was Soap McTavish. That was from Call of Duty 4. I mean, a good character, but recognizable, one of the best characters of all time, at least in the top 20, uh, hard to say, but definitely worth checking out the entire list to see where everyone ranked. Oh, and we do have Persona 4 Arena Ultimax coming up here pretty soon. However, we do have some unfortunate news for the Switch version. We can see this posted up on Twitter. Uh, this from the official Atlas West account saying, rollback netcode comes to Persona 4 Arena Ultimax this summer for Steam and PlayStation 4. Unfortunately, nothing about the Switch, which means at this time at least, we have to assume that it will not have rollback netcode. Not really sure why the PS4 and Steam will be getting it, but not the Switch. Could have something to do with Nintendo's online infrastructure as that appears to be going through some changes. Yeah, it's not great because you really can't recommend the Switch version then over the PS4 or the Steam version if those have rollback netcode and the Switch doesn't. It just makes for a significantly better online experience. I guess if you're not gonna play online and you just have some local friends and you would be taking the Switch with you, then sure, I get that, but yeah. Definitely uh, an unfortunate thing here for the Switch version. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with this massive NVIDIA leak. We can see this posted up over on TechCrunch saying, NVIDIA says hackers are leaking company data 
after ransomware attack. That's right, this is a malicious attack that is taking place here with NVIDIA where hackers have stolen a ton of information from NVIDIA servers and they appear to be leaking it out slowly, obviously looking for a payout, just showing that they're serious about actually putting this info out here. The biggest thing here though is while we're talking about like, you know, DLSS code and, and, and different things when it comes to their video cards and company stuff. It, I mean, there appear to be legit like employee information as part of this. So yes, yeah, serious, serious stuff here. But of course, people are very interested in what NVIDIA had on their servers when it came to things like DLSS source code, which we can see over on Tech Power Up. After having the list sent over to them, it, it says it includes things like C++ files, headers, assets that make up DLSS. And in these different files when it comes to DLSS, people spotted something interesting that appeared to be referring to a next-gen device from Nintendo. We can see this posted up by NW Player saying NVIDIA leaks have NVN2, which seems to be the graphics API for the Switch Pro based on Ampere with ray tracing support and DLSS 2.2. Now you may be wondering, okay, well, why, why does NVN2, what, what does that mean exactly? Well, NVN was the reference to uh, Nintendo's Switch API that was developed by NVIDIA, uh, obviously in cooperation with Nintendo. And now we have NVN2. So I'll, I'll kind of let you come to your own conclusion there what that means. But for me, it means this would be the, the next system from Nintendo. Would it be a Pro or would it be uh, the next gen Switch? Hard to say at right right now, but I am leaning towards this being the next gen device from Nintendo. Now, part of the reason for that is because in these leaks, we can see this screenshot here showing off Ampere GeForce cards, 3000 series. Uh, obviously, Ampere is the architecture that's used on the newest video cards from Nvidia. So think about the, the 3080 that people have been talking about trying to get at like Best Buy for MSRP it's based on Ampere. And then you also have these different Tegra chips for Orin and Drake. Wait, that's, so wait, is that, that's like Nate Drake. That, this might go further than we think with Nate over at Direct Feed Games. Anyway, the Ampere Tegra T239 was already talked about uh, last year, which you can see this tweet here from Copite saying this is a preliminary picture of the T234, that being Wikipedia, very clear. Nintendo will use a customized one, the T239. 239. And if we then go by this and say, okay, they're going to base their, their own customized chip off of this. I mean, this would be a significant jump from what we are currently using with that X1 from 2015. I mean, if we take a quick zoom in here on the chip that was posted up by Copilot, we can see Ampere based 2048 CUDA core, 16 shader blocks, the CPU being uh, titled Hercules, the ARM Cortex A78. AE, yes, this is a significant boost, but remember, Nintendo and Nvidia are going to say, take this T234 and customize it so that it's basically coming within a budget that Nintendo and Nvidia have set up and they're not gonna need all of the stuff. I'm sure they'll disable some cores and work to make sure the yield is acceptable coming out of manufacturing and obviously design specifically for games. But this is exactly what I was hoping to see from this relationship between Nvidia and Nintendo. That being the Tegra chip continuing to evolve heavily. I mean, this is looking like a pretty serious move by Nvidia in cooperation with Nintendo, of course, developing this chip for the Switch because the Tegra chip now has a place, whereas before it, it didn't really. I mean, sure, it was in the Nvidia Shield, but that didn't take off anywhere near what we're seeing with the Switch. I mean, every Switch that sells, that means a Tegra sold along with it. Obviously, it's powering it, and I mean, the Switch has sold north of 100 million units. So yeah, Nvidia's gonna look at that and say, we should probably act like design a Tegra chip specifically for this because it's no longer an experiment like it was when the Switch originally released and they just used an off the shelf X1. I mean, we're talking about DLSS, the deep learning super sampling and ray tracing being involved here based on these leaks and it using Ampere. Like this is some pretty serious stuff and would provide that next gen leap, which is one of the reasons I don't think this would be a Switch Pro, like one that would be closer to the current Switch. No, this is something that would actually be like that PS4 to PS5 situation. And now the question would be, okay, if we see this out here now through this leak of the DLSS code, 
Is this something coming up soon? Because there have been rumors around software being developed, like with games, specifically to use upscaling techniques. We've seen Nintendo even do something with Switch Sports where they're using FSR, clearly getting used to the idea of doing upscaling techniques. I mean, some people are still thinking, hey, we could see it by the end of this year. I don't think so, only because I don't believe this is going to be a Switch Pro situation. And there's the whole thing around the chip shortage right now and supply chain, all this stuff being pretty messed up to where I, I just don't think, if, even if Nintendo wanted to do this, I don't think they necessarily could, or at least launch with a number of units that they would be comfortable moving to a next generation with. So I'm sort of looking at this as, all right, we know the Mario Kart stuff, that DLC is gonna run through 2023. So I'm kind of looking at this as saying, all right, maybe early 2024, like in March, cause they don't have to launch holiday. So I guess you could say that's close to like holiday 2023, right? Like three months into 2024, they could launch the system, which means we would already know about it uh, midway through 2023, probably from an official announcement of Nintendo. But it is exciting stuff to finally get confirmation that yes, there is going to be an actual leap and it being a pretty serious leap because I'm sold on the hybrid concept of the Switch now. I just w wish it would perform better in certain games when it came to pretty sketchy frame rate and just look better on larger displays. And based on what they're doing here, even if they cut it down somewhat, they would look much better. And yeah, we would talk about things like 4K and higher frame rates with most titles. So this would be exciting stuff. We'll just have to keep an eye on this story to see if it continues to unfold as we go along. Next up, let's talk about an issue that's popped up now for the Steam Deck as it is finally getting into the hands of actual consumers who would be trying this out in the real world. There was even a video that was going around of Gabe Newell like hand delivering the Steam Deck to different people. That'd be Interesting to open the door and there's Gabe Newell holding your Steam Deck, but it was, it was a fun video to see. However, it looks like the Steam Deck may be more of a competitor to the Switch than we originally thought. Take a look at this posted up over on the Steam Deck subreddit, uh, where they say that they're experiencing stick drift on the right stick already. Normally that value would be zero, zero on X and Y, showing that it is dead center, but it appears that it is drifting off a bit, changing those values when no one's touching the stick itself. That's the right stick. So I guess that'd be the camera just kind of slowly panning around. And it looks like for now, there are two videos that have popped up on that subreddit. And I mean, there's manufacturing defects basically with everything that's released. Uh, we saw it with the PlayStation 5, the Xbox series, the, the Switch. Uh, the reason the Switch Joy-Cons came up so much and got so much uh, pushback was because it was significantly higher than we were expecting. You're gonna have a couple, right? That are just, you know what? They came out as a bad batch. You get it replaced under warranty and you move on. But it just seemed like everyone for the most part had some sort of Joy-Con drift story to tell online. And it appeared like it was just higher than normal. Class action lawsuits go crazy all over the place. And even Nintendo was like, well, we're kind of looking into it, but we're not gonna admit that the design that we came up with, which is different than like a PlayStation a 4, 5, a Xbox 360, Xbox One controller joystick, because remember, it has to have a lower profile to kind of fit in with it being a handheld system as well as a console. So looking at this, I think for now it's, we're still in that phase of these systems are going out. We have to see if this, these are smaller manufacturing defects or if this is a larger problem similar to what we saw with the Joy-Con drift. Remember, this is a bigger issue because it's the entire system. Like you have to, have, you have to send the system back. Most people aren't gonna take a screw out just to get the back off and then try to unscrew the, even if it's a modular piece and I made a video, a lot of people who just got this nice shiny handheld that's expensive are gonna say, you know what? It's under warranty, Valve's gonna go ahead and replace it. I'm not breaking the warranty or potentially messing this thing up. They're even hard to find anyway, right? So while it's a $400 handheld starting, really it's like double that on eBay. For now, we'll just have to keep an eye on the situation to see if more reports pop up around stick drift with the Steam Deck. It's not like Joy-Con level yet as we have like two reports, but it's always possible it could get there. Valve did say that they had designed this stick with Joy, like the Joy-Con drift story in mind, trying to say, okay, we're gonna at least create this thing, hoping that it doesn't like drift around or anything like that. But again, manufacturing defects, there's always a percentage that comes out of the factory that 
will inevitably need to be replaced. That's why you get some sort of warranty with it. In our last bit of news, let's talk about a surprising update that randomly went live the other night for Nintendo Switch Online. Seriously, it was just out of nowhere. People noticed there was a whole new section for the Nintendo Switch Online app on their Switch. And Nintendo also launched a part of their website to kind of show this feature off, which you can see here. These are the mission missions and rewards for Nintendo Switch Online. Now, the idea here is there will be missions that you can complete, like they show this screenshot here, showing you can back up your save data. That's once per week. You get 20 of these platinum coins. You can play software that supports online play. Just one game, you get 30 platinum coins, or you can play a specific game in that SNES, NES library. Here they have Super Mario Brothers. You get 50 coins or you can play some of the game trials that they have for 100 coins. A lot of this stuff is, yes, just you going out and doing different things with the service that you're already paying for, but it's kind of fun to have at least some sort of incentive to complete these things. Some people are saying, hey, they're kind of like achievements. I am looking at this sort of like, if you have Xbox Game Pass, they have like quests that you can complete and you get points. Kind of looking at it in that regard right now. There are rewards, as I mentioned, which seems to mostly tie into your icon. So there is a bit more customization that you can have now with your character icon. And they also have a little, little almost shop there that you can spend your platinum coins with. At which point you can kind of put together a different icon using elements. So for example, in this screenshot, they show a frame, a character, a background, you put it all together and there's Mario throwing Cappy and there's a bunch of different themed ones for Animal Crossing and Super Mario Odyssey that they say is available for about the next month or so. And I like that Nintendo is doing this because it at least shows that they are looking to, I guess, just add more value through, yes, missions and rewards, but I mean, it's fun. There's obviously a pull for people to complete achievements and trophies and stuff on the Xbox and the PlayStation. And while people have been asking at times for Nintendo to do achievements, I don't think it's ever been like super high on their list, but it's, it's fun to take this idea, which they've had for their website, where you would have to go to like my rewards or Nintendo. And I remember getting like 3DS and Wii U games and punching in this code and you'd get these points and You'd be able to spend it on different, even physical items that they would mail out to you, or it'd just be like a desktop or phone wallpaper or something there. This is great to actually bring it in to the Switch system. You don't leave the system or anything, you do it all in that little Nintendo Switch online application. And I would like to see them continue to expand this. Sure, it'd be fun to have some sort of achievement system from Nintendo, but even if it's just like a reward system that gets you to try different things that you wouldn't normally, and yeah, maybe it's just icons, but. Like I said, it's fun to collect these things and customize it as we go. So I'm curious to see if Nintendo continues to evolve this as we go along. It just kind of makes the online ecosystem with Nintendo a bit more fun. And before we go to the comments of the day, we're gonna take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday, where I ask, new Nvidia leaks show a more powerful Switch as well into development. When do you think it releases? 3% said 2022, which, yeah, I, I don't believe this next gen switch would be coming out at the end of this year, but we can see uh, 32% said 2023 and then 47% said 2024, which, yeah, I mean, it could come out at the end of 2023 or even towards the beginning of 2024. And then 18% of people think, hey, this, this generation right now is gonna run all the way until 2025. I kind of feel like if they wanted to go that long, they would need some sort of revision, some sort of pro system, but I'm kind of leaning towards Right now, holiday 2023, but even early 2024 and just do what they did with the Switch and release on their own time is, I, I think, completely possible. But one thing's for sure, Nintendo is obviously designing a successor to the current Switch and it looks like it could actually be a pretty serious jump from what we're dealing with right now. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Sigma saying, I was super excited for GT7, but hearing it's always online is a real bummer. Single player games should never be locked behind an internet connection. And I, I do agree with that, uh, but we did have at least an explanation from the series creator uh, where they said, the requirement for the online connection isn't specific to the cafe per se, it's just to prevent cheating overall from people trying to modify the save data. So that's the real reason for the online connection. The only part of the game that doesn't require an online connection is the arcade mode because that has no effect on the save data. So that's possible. See, the biggest problem I have with this when it comes to GT7 is 
Car games, especially on these online stores, have a limited life. We talked about how Forza had to be removed from Game Pass and taken off the shop because licensing with these different car manufacturers eventually runs out and you can't sell the game anymore. And that will eventually happen with Gran Turismo 7. I mean, could be a decade from now, but when that does happen, what do you do with the disc that you bought if the servers aren't up anymore to call to? Does that mean it is a very limited experience as it is right now with these early copies or the disc basically becomes a coaster? I would like to think that when they know that basically the game is gonna be delisted, we'll say a decade from now or something. They go, okay, we're gonna patch this so it still works offline because at that point, who cares about cheating if you're not even playing against other people online? And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button, it really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here. Today was that massive NVIDIA leak that appears to be pointing towards Nintendo's next generation Switch. What do you think about some of the features with ray tracing and DLSS? Also, what about the Valve Steam Deck apparently running into its own drifting issue there. And then were you surprised to see that Nintendo Switch Online missions and rewards section pop up? Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.